Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Through the Keyhole, the show that brings you the inside story. Tonight, as always, we borrowed the keys to two fascinating homes belonging to well-known personalities, and with the help of our beloved house detective, the sainted Lloyd Grossman, for it is he, we'll be taking a privileged peep behind closed doors. But the question is, whose? Well, to try and answer that question, our panel tonight represents an eclectic mixture of decorating and interior skills accessorized with amazing flair, <laughs> lasting for all generations and all seasons. <laughs> of all the presenters and television personalities that I've ever known, <laughs> our first panelist is certainly one of them. <laughs> Andrew O'Connor. Although our next panellist was born in Wales, she certainly doesn't look like a traditional Welsh dresser, does she? She looks like the magnificent Molly Parkin. Each time our third panellist is on the radio, he reaches more than three million listeners, who fortunately can't reach him. Yes, from quote unquote, it's your favourite and his, the one and only, Mr Nigel Rees. Well, now, uh, let me tell you a little more about the game. With the help of these old magic keys here, we'll be taking a careful look inside two fascinating homes, and that should tell us something, maybe quite a bit, about the person or persons who live there. All our friends over here have got to do is try and work out who that is. So let's join Lloyd right now at home number one and watch closely, because remember, the clues are there as we go through the key. Well, the most striking thing about this room is this exceptionally lavish floor, which is the color of lapis lazuli. It looks like something that could be in a Middle Eastern palace or maybe in a nightclub. Certainly, a lot of the clothes here are very appropriate for after dark wear. Now, someone in this household is very keen on physical fitness, and they've turned part of this sitting room into a gym. There are barbells, chrome weights, and a weightlifting bench. Now, this is a very cosmopolitan household. I see recently they've had a very big Dutch visitor. <laughs> All the furniture in this room is very big and comfortable and casual. Now, two things that they're interested in are self-improvement and travel. You can see that they've just started subscribing to one of those teach yourself flower arranging by post courses. And they've got a big steamer trunk that's ready to go. So they're always ready to jet off to some far-flung part of the world. Music is very important to them, but they don't take it too seriously. Just look at those two jocular musical sculptures. They do think about the deeper things in life as well, though. Maybe they're interested in mysticism and futurology. Well, this music room is extremely up-to-date. We've got every sort of noise-making high techery here, and it certainly looks as if they're in the midst of some serious composition. I see they've even got one of those songwriters, helpers, computers. Now, in the midst of all the hard work, it's good to know that they've still got a flair for romance. Just look at the cushions on those sofas. Another aid to concentration, though, might be this sand picture. It's very contemplative. There's a close connection with Japan. There's a Japanese parasol on the floor and a geisha girl in a glass box. Someone here really likes fast cars, or at least the connotations of fast, expensive cars. There are lots of Jaguars and a Ferrari. What I like the most, though, are these two clocks. One of them, at least, shows a slightly casual approach to timekeeping. Well, this bed could be straight out of a log cabin. It's a four-poster with the Wild West look. Now, you'd certainly have to have a fairly wild personality to sleep in this Tabasco red bed linen. But even the plush toys share their owner's vivacity. Someone in this household likes dressing up. There's some wild hats around this room. I noticed that the fast cars have intruded here as well, only not all of them are quite so sporty. Let's look at the evidence. The 24-carat jacket. 
the glitzy barbells, the fast cars. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thanks a lot there, Lloyd. And uh, now for our home and studio audience, though not for our panel, here's whose house it is. <laughs> Andrew, let's begin the analysis with your good self. Well, the thing that struck me the most was the very high railings at the front. And at the back window, there are actually bars that, like, sort of bar things. So I think there's someone who didn't want to let Lloyd in. <laughs> so I've spoken to Lloyd down the end of the panel there. Nigel looks just like Lloyd Grossman. David, it's over to you. It's amazing. <laughs> that it's just like him. So the other thing is that when he said it was a Wild West look bedroom, it didn't look anything like the one. I thought it was like, well, there was no spittoons in there, no, no sawdust on the floor. I think it's a boy, isn't it? It's a man we're looking at, isn't it? No, it's not. So that's good to know, anyway, that we're looking for... It's definitely a woman, isn't it, David? And... Uh, yeah. I could just tell that instinctively, fortunately, because the clogs gave it away. That's what did it. I think it's obviously someone who's into fast cars and uh, maybe who was a geisha girl once. Andrew's made it very easy for you, Molly. <laughs> well, yeah, I, th I think that it's uh, definitely female because uh, the colours, the yellow and blue, are very female colours. Um, I think that um, it, it's possibly somebody who was into the body, a person like a page three pin-up person who was into the body, still is, uh, but now has uh, started making records. <laughs> and certainly single, single, Pardon? but with rather a torrid love life. <laughs> it's a single person's flat. It's a single person's flat? I think so. I don't know about the torridity. I think we'll have to... Pass on that one. We'll ask her about that. Well, right. I make a note. Memo to self. Ask about Torrid. Torrid. torrid, torrid. Right. How, how do you spell Torrid? Nigel Grossman. Nigel Grossman. Yes, it is extraordinary. I do often get mistaken for Lloyd. Are people very, very affectionate? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. The last person was, said to me in Ireland, excuse me, sir, have I seen you on the television? And I said, well, it's possible, you know. And he said, are you Mr. Lloyd Grossman? And he was obviously thinking this was a compliment. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm just reassured. Yeah. Lloyd will like that. Right, now we'll get back to it. Yeah, game. yeah, well, I'll take, I'll take my glasses off, as he does. But I was just adding the... summing up the evidence, as a judge should. Wild personality, female, vivacious, loves dressing up, and I assumed immediately that it was Molly Parkin. <laughs> We're talking about a young woman here who is a, a musician, probably sings. Uh, wears these rather fetching costumes which are on display on that very, very tasteful hat stand by the door and, and probably rolls around on the lapis lazuli floor. Right. Uh, so is who that... is that then? <laughs> <laughs> who springs to mind? Does she make records for Stock Aitken and Waterman? Pardon? Does she make Stock Aitken and Waterman? <laughs> Sonia? It isn't, is it? It's not Sonia. I want to just discount Sonia from... Uh... Did you have a bit of verbal dyslexia there? <laughs> probably, David, probably. Um, does she work with Pete Waterman, this lady? She has done, yes. She has done. And she sang songs that, that he's written. Name, name the songs you're thinking about. Oh, they're all the same, though, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> there was a disco beat in it, probably, and... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, but that's all of them. Does she have one of these names which is just one word? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and Andrew is right that it begins with S. Sabrina. Sabrina. No, Sabrina's another era. Sabrina. 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 There you are. They got Brilliant. you there. I thought it was you too, Molly. I love that place. Where is it? In London? Yeah. It's great. And what about all those cars, then? Do you, have you had all those cars? Yeah, I collect them, and then people know that I collect them, so What's sometimes the people give them to me. What's little miniatures or the, the real thing? Any size, especially the real thing. Oh, the you presents. have yeah. <laughs> You have a fleet of those. Mm. You, you look want... like a chauffeur, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> have you worn the gold jacket? Is it a, st a stage prop, the gold jacket? Yep. That was for a track we did called Love on a Mountaintop. 
Yeah. I think I went there with that. I think we've been there. Did yeah, you? Know. <laughs> Could we well, ask you, you about you know the, the mountaintop? Yeah, we went. Well, we yeah. went. Together. I don't. We've we been went. together. But you did, a, you did a song about pumping iron and all that, didn't um, you? Um, so much. Yes. That was my first yes. single. And how about the torrid side of your life? Are you going to tell us about that? <laughs> um, shall I? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, what do you want to know? What's it like in Tahiti? Sorry. What's it like in Tahiti? Hot. What <laughs> about all the stuffed animals? The Who stuffed stuffs animals? them? Those are sort of, I find it very difficult to let go of all my sort of childhood, childhood things. So I sort of have bits and pieces everywhere, but they're kind of coming together to sort of show me what I'm all about, slowly but surely. But the beds from LA, I actually shipped that back. Wow. It's enormous. Wow. Yes. Your clock with the, all the issues the one -ish. on. Are you a, a bad timekeeper? <laughs> um, I think my manager sort of thinks so, because we sort of have dates that are sort of one-ish, and then he turns it sort of 2.30, and it's like, I knew you'd just be arriving now. But I turn up for work on time, just sort of meetings with my manager. That's funny, isn't it? And who, with all that music <laughs> in the... Who are your heroes and heroines in music? Like? Um, Shirley MacLaine is one of my heroes. Um, who else do I like? Oh, so many people. Stevie Wonder. Quincy Jones. Mary Lloyd. <laughs> Mary Lloyd. And you, do you do a lot of that working out at home? Yep, I really do. And also now I have a plie machine as well, because I do sort of a ballet, ballet. A plie machine? I was machine. a ballet dancer when I was younger, so I need to do that to keep fit. So, so I have a plie machine as well, which plie. is like... This is a machine, that, this is oh, a machine that forces your knees open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where can you which get one of those? Where can you? <laughs> Can I borrow that Andrew, machine? it's yours. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, gi we'll give the key to Sunita in one of those machines for your, for your own personal <laughs> use. How's that? Be Is that all right? But I, you don't have to keep fit, because everywhere it says that you never get hungry and you eat very little anyway. Is that right? But I'm starting to eat as I get older. I think, for some reason, I've just sort of thought I shouldn't eat. It's a ballet dancer's mentality when you're younger. You sort of think, I've got to stay stick thin like a ballet dance. And I started eating and I didn't really get any bigger, so I love food now. <laughs> oh, good. Well, this is good news. Well, we've got here, as a souvenir, we loved, we loved seeing your home. This Thank is the you. Through the Keyhole Key. Thank you. To keep and to cherish. Lovely you... to put on my mantelpiece. Exactly. Thank it's you great very to much. have you with us. Thank Good you. luck with the career and all the songs and so on. And we'll take a break and come rushing back. But Sunita, thank you very much. Thank you. I wonder who's next. <laughs> Big breakfast, orange juice, one cup of chocolate. Fillet of fish for my wife. Big Mac, two Big Mac. Make it three. Two cheeseburger. One up the pie. One small, one large. Chicken McNuggets. Welcome back. Welcome back to Through the Keyhole with Lloyd Grossman, the Minister of Your Environment. So let's join Lloyd right now at house number two as we go through the key. I'd almost forgotten what George Michael looked like before he'd had his hair cut. But actually, this ancient Greek fellow is a capital example of architectural salvage, of which I'm standing in the midst of a kaleidoscope. So there's stained glass coats of arms, there's wrought ironwork, there's timber, there are wonderful pots full of plants and flowers. Indeed, this whole courtyard has slightly the air of being backstage at the Paris Opera, and I wouldn't be surprised if someone who lived here was an opera fan with a great flair for the dramatic. So we have these wonderful fellows holding up bits of buildings, and we have a Venetian flag. Someone here has got a real magpie complex. 
Well, it's quite fitting that Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette should preside over this dining room because it has a tremendously French feeling to it. It's definitely the room of a bon viveur. There's a wonderful painting at the end of a rather high-class al fresco picnic and a whole heap of food magazines. So whoever this house belongs to is really crazy about food. Now, this house certainly belongs to someone rather big because everything here is huge. The radishes are the size of footballs. This butcher's block is the size of an apartment block. It's all big, heavy stuff, and it's got quite a professional feeling to it. Now, this kitchen is a central part of the whole entertaining scene in this house because it's actually part of the dining room, and you can imagine long nights of talking and chopping and drinking wine here. There's a great attention to detail. These copper pots must be polished every day. A precipitous spiral staircase takes you up to the top of the house in this little music room. It's a room for both playing and listening. There's a brace of keyboards and a powerful stereo and lots of opera. See, this is probably someone who likes big, flamboyant, dramatic gestures. Now, all the paintings around here are bright, sunny colors. So someone here likes the south of France. Though I think not as a sun worshiper, probably as more of a wine and olive worshiper. There's a dizzying heap of cookbooks here, and they're all arranged on an open staircase that leads up to a loft. Now, you can tell what a foodie household this is by the fact that they have a second dining room and a second kitchen upstairs here. Now, they're not as elaborate as the ones downstairs, but they're still pretty formal, an incredibly glitzy French chandelier. The food is all photogenic and beautifully well arranged. And there's a great array of guidebooks and atlases in the corner. So travel is vital here. Here in the bedroom, there's a very vivid screen extolling the virtues of the South of France lifestyle. So it's rather surprising to find this poster in such a francophilic setting. The gallery above the bed is festooned with an encyclopedic collection of hats. So quite clearly, someone here likes dressing up and going out. Let's look at the evidence. The upmarket al fresco, the photogenic food, the gallery of hats. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Thanks a lot, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience, Here's whose house it is. <laughs> Nigel, we begin with you. I feel that I have seen into this home before. I've never been there, but I feel that I know it because I think that it is much photographed. And I think that some of the photographs end up in some of the books which I think this man writes. Uh, he's a big man, you say, or Lloyd said, and he likes opera, but I'm ruling out that you've got uh, Luciano Pavarotti around the back, because I don't think it's him, because I think he lives in London. I think this is his London house, because I could hear aeroplanes coming in, landing at Heathrow over it. Are you nodding, David? Well, I, no, no, I'm wide awake. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, <laughs> but I was just admiring how uh, observant you were. Yes, uh, I think that um, when you... The, the only thing that puzzled me really was the brace of keyboards. A brace of pheasants, yes, but a brace of keyboards did surprise me. Um, I think we're talking about just a man here, aren't we? Because they were just well, male they're... hats in the bedroom. Well, we are talking mainly about the man of the household, although there is wife and children, but Molly. Oh, wife and children, because I would have thought that that was um, a bachelor pad somehow. Mm. Um, it, it, However, you're concentrating on the man of the I'm house. I'm concentrating on the mm. man, and I think that he's a, a, a celebrity uh, cook in, in that way. He's, he's a celebrity chef. He might be a television <laughs> cook. Uh, I think that he also has his own restaurant, that it all looks so immensely professional. He might have uh, his own restaurant or a string of res restaurants. Um, he's uh, a bon viveur, obviously. He's got a, a sunny, outgoing disposition. There's a lot of yellow around. Is that good, yellow? 
yes, it always uh, shows somebody who's very extrovert and full of beans, and so he's got a big personality. Um, I can't, I'd like to put a name to it, but it just is escaping me for the minute. All right, let's go to Andrew then for a moment. We're, we're putting together an interesting portrait here. Yes, this person is obviously large, as you say, and also a very... Thank you for the clap there. And also very um, rich, because it's a very... They've made a lot of money from whatever they do. Outside, the, the, the outside with all the greenery and the Greek heads, it was like any minute now, Demis Roussos would come around the corner singing ever and ever and ever, wasn't it? And then the dining room was like Sasha Distel would be there and the Rolf Harris paintings. But the thing for me, obviously this person is a chef, and I've decided that they, they throw dinner, this man throws dinner parties, you see, and then what he does is that when, if he kills some of the guests, if they die, he sprays them gold and he mounts them around the house. <laughs> Definitely, because where the hats were, I don't know if you saw the thing that was where the hats, there was sort of a bit of a man there, the middle bit, and bits of hats everywhere. Then there were hands and faces. Th those are real people. Um, <laughs> sprayed gold and mounted, and those are recipes that he doesn't introduce into his restaurant, I can only hope. It's right. a TV chef, David. Yes, it is. It's a TV other. chef, it's a cooking person, it's a person who's had restaurants. Now... It's someone who's big. Well, you, you put, you've put the pieces together. Can you put the name together? Does he have a beard? <laughs> Doesn't help. Doesn't help. David Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's very good on food, but it's not David Bellamy. Think of the hair. There's something else to go with the hair. The head. Uh, he has, <laughs> oddly enough, he has been described. You mentioned him earlier, Pavarotti. He has been described as the Pavarotti of the food industry. Bertie's English. A sumo wrestler with a ponytail. Will you come through the keyhole, Roy Ackerman? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you are. You see, he got the Pavarotti, but they didn't make... Congratulations yeah, I, on being yeah. in the panel, but they got all know, the facts yeah. about you together. I know your excellent guides. Do forgive me. And, I mean, you've done all the various things we're talking about, the chef, the television series. That's right. Uh, the books, as everybody said, and the restaurants. Of all the restaurants you've been involved with, which was your favourite? I don't know, probably the, the same one. I'm 190 Queensgate, where I know you've been a, yeah. a, a, a customer. Yeah. And the Gay Hazar in Soho, which is a, mm. still a perennial favourite Hungarian restaurant. Mm. Which is oh, yeah. Nice. And where we get a great feeling of, from the house as well, of food and, of course, that room where it's set out for dinner and so on. If you had to pick, not a condemned man's last meal, but mm. the perfect three-course meal, what would be your perfect three-course meal? Something probably very simple. I think uh, it will certainly have fish in it, probably grilled simply, and um, over an open fire, hopefully, on a beach with some sunshine, mm. and uh, some, mixed, uh, some mixed salad leaves with maybe some uh, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil, and lots of, uh, lots of good French bread. And uh, something simple for dessert as well. Maybe a good, cause some good cheese and just some fresh fruit. I mean, really simple, but uh, fresh. Which kitchen do you use the most, upstairs or downstairs? <laughs> uh, normally upstairs sort of every day, but downstairs sort of once a week for entertaining. Just so thought of carrying the shopping upstairs. Where did you hide your family upstairs. then? Science. I'm sorry? Where did you hide your family? We're at the other end. It's a sort of lateral, lateral style. So we're living above the shop, as it were. So. In the other kitchen? In the other kitchen, yeah. <laughs> In the fridge, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you use the keyboards for? Uh, well, trying to play them, but uh, not terribly but you successful. You sing opera, or do you? No, no, I, I like to play the piano and the keyboard, but uh, for, for fun. <laughs> and if they name a dish after you one day, like a pavlova, what do you want it to be? Oh, I think it should be something, uh, something fairly large. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll think about that one, but here is a key as a souvenir, Roy. Of thank you very much. Your you. delicious house. Splendid, thank you. Not to mention the food and so on. It's a delight to have you with us. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. Our thanks to Roy and to Sunita, of course, and not to mention over there to the lovely Andrew and to Molly and to Nigel as well. Our thanks to all of you. Until the next time, goodbye for now.